How are we doing today? Good to see you guys again. So, today is going to be about XLR mics and audio interfaces. A lot of people have asked me these questions because, honestly, their their things are messing up. And it's disconnecting, it's uh, not connected properly when they unplug it, to reset it, like things go haywire. So, I'm going to show you a few things as well as have a couple of talking points about the differences between a condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone. And so let's start off with that question dead on the nose. So the difference between a dynamic and a condenser microphone is a dynamic microphone is for capturing loud noises, drums, vocals, guitars, uh, somebody's strong voice such as mine where it's deep and punctual. And, uh, as far as a condenser mic is more for like a studio. It's not really for stage. It's um it's delicate voices, high pitched voices. That's that's what a condenser microphone is for. So with that, maybe that'll help you choose what microphone that you need to get. Say if you've got a condenser microphone and you're in your room, you probably just want a dynamic. Most people you that have deeper voices are gonna need a dynamic. Uh, people that are ticking, tacking away on their keyboards, probably going to need a dynamic. Um, the only thing I would say for these uh, dynamic ones is they can be very quiet. They don't have much powering them, so you end up having to boost the gain all the way up, especially in OBS, as you can see right here. One second. Right here where my microphone is it's all the way up on here as well as all the way up on my audio interface it sounds crisp it's fine but that's that's what it does i even have it running constant 48 volt power so it doesn't lose connection and drop out so from here i'm going to show you the settings how to set up in obs your microphones and your audio so we'll first start off with just regular audio desktop audio to be able to capture the sound, say from your game, from your music. Uh, this is where this is going to be. Uh, now, mind me, most people want to keep it at negative three to five decibels, um, unless you're cranking your music or you got a high frequency output. Um, you'll probably need to do the same. Uh, otherwise, it'll get distorted on your viewer's end. And you'll start redlining, and that's that's no go. No bueno. Don't blow somebody's phone speaker up. So we're going to go into properties first, and this is where you set up what device that you're using. I set mine to default because I set within Windows what my default device is. And that way it saves it from if it gets disconnected and reconnected, it'll reconnect right away even if OBS is still running. So that's, that's why I like doing that. And then you can go to an advanced audio property, properties. And oh, by the way, the same for the microphone input. Your properties, you, you can set it the same way as the desktop audio. There's no difference. I just don't. I set it to default and set within Windows, and I'll also show you that. So for the microphone, I have it set to zero. Now, some of you may need to boost that if you don't have a low voice like mine. You'll probably have to boost that up a few decibels. Now, mind me that you may need to go preamp on it too. If you don't have a preamp, I would definitely suggest getting a preamp microphone audio interface. Something that pumps power into it to push out that electricity, that sound to get to your speakers. Otherwise, it's going to be very fucking quiet leap in here we have a few settings so the decibel set you can set this to set the levels of how much push out like I said with my desktop audio it pushes out too hard and most computers do so you're gonna have to dial that back to 0.3 or lower trying to get you in that yellow mode as you can see right here on the screen See where my voice gets in the yellow? That's that's the sweet spot. That's where you want to be. Then you also have the balance. 
that only activates when you activate mono mode. So most XL, uh, XLR microphones, condenser microphones, they're going to be mono, which means one channel, which means you're going to get that voice on one channel. So you don't want that. You're going to want to activate that and then bring it into here. And now you have two channels of audio. So I'm going to show you a quick This is how it sounds when it's on one channel. This is how it sounds when it's on two channels. And there is a huge difference because only one ear will freaking work. <laughs> and if you're sending it out to somebody that's using on like say a speaker system or a surround sound system, it's going to cut half their speakers and they're just going to be like, oh, well, this sucks. I don't want to listen to your live stream anymore. So make sure that is checked if you're running an XLR microphone. They do have the sync ops, uh, offset button. So this is if your something is causing your microphone from when it gets to from the microphone to the audio interface to the computer for it to slow down and the audio comes out delayed. That's where you offset it to sync it up. Doesn't work that well. I haven't had to use it since I got this new computer so it's it's working fine because I don't have to use it <laughs> but uh definitely need to change it up when it comes to that one if you're on an older computer have no audio interface or you just have a single mic audio interface it probably doesn't have a preamp it's probably going to be delayed there's also auto audio mon uh, monitoring and with the audio monitoring you will be able to revert the signal from your microphone back out to speakers. So you can monitor and output both and you're going to hear your own voice. Not the smartest in my opinion, um, but if you're wanting to test to make sure that you can hear your voice, just click the monitor and output on and, and then test it and then turn it monitor off. So it just outputs. You also have tracks. These tracks are important because this is telling it what track to send it to. Now you can have more than six tracks, but most audios do not. So you can have your desktop audio on one, your game chat audio on another, and then your mic input. And this is really good for post-production. So say I close this video out and then I pop on Adobe Premiere and start editing. Well, it's gonna pop up the audio is three different channels and I can manipulate each part of the audio. So OBS comes in handy for overall making videos. You got a record button in here. You got streaming. You got access to your cameras. You can do whatever the hell you want. So done with that, I'm going to jump up into... The power, no, I got, so I got everything except for the Windows setup. Windows setup is gonna be pretty straightforward. You're gonna wanna be setting your default device. And uh, that is going to be in the bottom right corner on the audio level section. You're gonna wanna right click that and hit sounds for me. And you'll have this little tiny window. And on this little tiny window, you're gonna wanna go to playback first. This is where you set your audio out. Now, I suggest doing this if you have an audio interface to set it as default. So even if it gets unplugged, once you plug it back in, it's gonna automatically connect. It will not do that within OBS. Uh, also good practice is to deactivate things that you're not using so it doesn't play the audio through a different source just by force or by habit. Um, by habit, I mean that some applications do favor certain uh, audio output sources. So if you deactivate them all and just have your XLR fucking speakers, you're going to be good to go. So to change it, you're going to want to right click your audio interface, which is mine, Focusrite USB audio. 
and you're going to want to set it as default communications device as well as set as default device. You want it to be both. Once you do that, if you're on a Skype call, if you're doing game chat, if you're on Call of Duty, they have these settings to set your microphone to, hey, use the communications microphone. Hey, use the device microphone default. And it really helps out if it's just both. <laughs> you, you, you kick out the middleman. Now I have two sources of audio set up because I've been having issues with my audio interface. It disconnects at random. Yes, I can turn it off and turn it back on and it'll reconnect, but it, who knows how long it'll stay back on. Something about pumping out too much power with this guy, and I'm really not, I'm only running two seven inch studio monitors, is causing issues. Once I get in contact with Scarlett, I'll see about that. And I know a lot of people bought this audio interface, so I'll definitely report back when I find out what the hell's on, wrong with this thing. So next step is to set up the microphone as default. Now you're gonna to wanna to set it up as default communications and default device. I have multiple microphones on my list because some are coming from just the ports on your computer itself. So this Realtek audio, that's from the back. The line in audio is from the top front of my computer and the stereo mix is a virtual driver. Up here I have my two webcams, uh, the Ziggy HD and, and the Anoni. I can leave those on. It doesn't really affect them. You, you can leave those on. I, I deactivated the other ones because I honestly never freaking use them. Less bloatware. So same as the audio out, the audio in is going to be a right click. And in here it will say set as default device, but I'm already set. So yeah, it'll show like this. Set as default device, set as default communication device. So make sure to set your audio interface as both of them. Now from there, that's pretty much all I got for XLRs. If you have any specific questions, I can definitely answer them for you in the comments down below. Make sure to jump on our Discord. We do have a tech help um, channel. It's uh, Crazy Cat Gaming. And uh, I'll post the link in the description below. All the good links will be down below. If you have any other ideas or if you have any specific things that you want covered, directly email me. Your ideas help me. I'm going to be doing this big spiel of uh, OBS settings and overlays and this and that here in the next few weeks, pumping out these videos just so they're there for you guys. And uh, that's pretty much all I really need to do. But it's been an absolute pleasure helping you guys out. Please let me know if you need more.